Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. Let's learn how to make a very simple checkpoint system. This is perfect for racing games or really just anything where you want the player or any object to follow a preset path. A while ago I made my racing RTS game and one of the things that I needed to implement was some way of identifying if the player was indeed following the track correctly. So naturally in a racing game you don't want the player to just randomly skip around through huge chunks of the track, so that led me to make a basic checkpoint system. So over here I have my demo track. Now the goal is obviously to follow the player to actually go through the correct path. So we want to make sure that the player goes through here and makes this turn to go through here rather than just cutting straight through here. So let's first think how we can make that logic. Essentially we need to have multiple checkpoints, then we test when the player goes through any of them, and then we verify that the player went through the correct right checkpoint. So we need to keep track of which one is going to be the next valid checkpoint. So first, for tracking when the player goes through a checkpoint, we can use a simple trigger collider. So let's create a new 3D object, let's make it a simple cube, and by default it already comes with a box collider, so just go ahead and make it a trigger so it's not a solid object. And then let's just put it all the way up here, so just scale it, and give it a transparent visual. Alright, there it is, there's our checkpoint. Now let's make a script to detect our collisions. The script will be attached to a single checkpoint, so let's give it a name, make a new C-sharp script, name it our checkpoint single, okay? And let's rename this also checkpoint single, and just attach the script on there, okay? Now here, in order to test for the collisions, it's very simple, just add a private void on trigger enter, so as another collider enters inside of this trigger collider. So when we do, the first thing that we need to do is verify that it's a player, now the player has a simple player component, so we can test that. So if going to the other get component, or rather try get component, this one is more performance, so try get component of type player out player player. All right, so if this succeeds, then we know that it is indeed the player that went through this collider. So let's just verify that this is working, do a simple debug log, let's say checkpoint. So here we are, and down here is the console, and as we move forward and hit it, Yep, there you go, we have our checkpoint. Okay, so far so good. So we are correctly testing when the player goes through that checkpoint. Now this script is meant to handle only a single checkpoint object. Now let's make another script that will be responsible for the whole track logic. So a new c -sharp script, let's name it the track checkpoints. And over here I have the track game object containing all of them, and just drag the script onto it, okay? Now this script is going to need to know all the checkpoints in our track, so one way we could do that would be just making a simple list of transforms inside of this script, and then here in the editor we would add them one by one, so that's one approach. But an easier way is to put all of the single checkpoints as children of a certain checkpoint game object and we cycle through that. So let's use that approach instead, so inside the track let's create an empty game object, name it the checkpoints, and then take the checkpoint single and just place it inside the checkpoints. Now before we make some more, let's go ahead and drag it onto the project files just to make it a prefab. Okay, so now we have this one, and let's add another one in here, and another one in here. So go ahead, rotate them, everything works just as long as the player collides, okay? And now essentially in our track script, we're going to cycle through this container and go through all of these objects. So here let's first do a private void awake, and on awake let's find it, so transform find to find the checkpoints container. So this is the transform for the checkpoints transform. And then we just do a for each transform, so checkpoint single transform in the checkpoints transform. So what this does is it cycles through all of the children of this particular transform. So to verify this is working, let's simply do a debug log on the checkpoint single transform to see every single one of them. Let's see. And yep, over here on the console we can see we have all of our checkpoints. So the first one, second one, and the third one. So with this we are correctly grabbing all the children. And by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It really helps out the channel. So this is the method that we're going to use to place all of our checkpoints. Now one very important thing about this method is the order in the hierarchy. As you can see here, first it grabbed this one, then it grabbed the second one, and then the third one. So the order as we cycle through the children, it goes through from top to bottom. So the order in here is very important. So back in this script, we have the checkpoints in here, okay. Now let's handle a way to have each checkpoint notify this track checkpoints class when the player goes through it. So let's make a function, so make a public void, 
let's name it the player through checkpoint and let's receive an argument so we know which checkpoint the player went through so let's receive it of type checkpoint single okay now we need to call this function from the checkpoint single script so that means that this script needs a reference to the track checkpoints so we can easily do that first of all let's make a field of type track checkpoints and then let's say expose a function that we can set this field so a public void set track checkpoints and we receive of type track checkpoints and we simply set this dot track checkpoints to that one. Okay, and then when we have here the on trigger enter, we trigger that one. We say that the player went through the checkpoint and pass in this. Okay, so we are notifying the main class when the player goes through this checkpoint. Now we just need to call this function from the other one. So in here, as we're cycling through all of them, let's first grab the component of type checkpoint single. So just get component checkpoint single, and then go into the checkpoint single and call set track checkpoints and pass in this one. Okay, so just like this, we should be able to see this function being called for each checkpoint. So let's do a debug log on the checkpoint single and let's log the transform name just so we know that it's a different one. So let's see. So here we are, here's the console. And as I move up, I should be able to see the first one. Yep, the first checkpoint single and the second one and the third one. Okay, so far so good. With this, we are correctly tracking that the player goes through the checkpoints. Now, all we need to do is actually identify the order. So for keeping track of the order, let's first actually make a list to keep all of our checkpoint singles. So a simple private list, checkpoint single, and it's our checkpoint single list. And on awake, we initialize it. And every time we go through one, we simply add it to the list. Very simple. So you have a list with all of our checkpoints. And now all we need to do is just keep track of which one is going to be the next one. So here we have a list of all of our checkpoints. And then when the player goes through it, we can identify the index of the one that the player went through. So we can go into the list and trigger index of pass in this checkpoint single. And let's do a log on this one. Let's see. Here we are and let's go. And yep, the player went through index zero and index one and then index two. All right, great. So with this, you can already guess how we're going to handle this logic. So here, all we need to do is keep track of the next player checkpoint index. So just a private int for the next checkpoint single index. And when we start, let's set it to zero. And then here, all we check is just compare this. So if the index of the one that the player has just passed is the next one, then we have passed the correct checkpoint. And if not, then we have the wrong checkpoint. Then if we go into correct checkpoint, then we want to go into the next one. So just go into the next checkpoint single index and just increase it. Very simple. Let's add some logs. So debug.log, say that it's correct and the wrong. Let's test. So let's go through the first one, which should be correct. And yep, it is correct. Now let's skip the second one and go straight into the third one. And nope, we have a wrong. So we need to actually go back into the second one. And if we hit the second one, Yep, correct, and now the third one, and yep, now it is correct. All right, great. Now, one more thing we need to add is the ability to do multiple laps. So right now I went through the very last checkpoint, but if I go through the very first one once again, and nope, now it's saying wrong, so let's fix that. Here, when we increase, instead of doing plus plus, let's do next checkpoint index equals that one plus one, and then we do a modulo of the list count. So checkpoint single list dot count. So this symbol is a modulo operation, which returns the remainder of the division. So as we go past the count, it simply loops back into zero. So let's see if we can now do multiple laps. So as I go, go through the first one and it's correct. Second one, correct. Third one, also correct. Now let's go back into the first one. So here is the first one again. Let's go through it and yep, also correct. So now we have support for multiple tracks. All right, great. Now with this, the system is almost done, so we can correctly identify the correct checkpoint. Now let's polish up the code a bit with some nice events. Okay, so just defining two simple events and firing them off in here, okay. Now let's make a simple UI. All right, so I just made a very simple visual. So on the canvas, make a container. Inside, we've got a red image and just some text on it. 
Now we just want to show and hide this depending on the checkpoints. So if you're on the script, all we need is a reference to the track checkpoints. Let's make it a serialized field so we can set the reference in the editor. So here, just drag the reference on there, okay. And now all we need to do is make a private void start, since we should probably subscribe to the events on start and not on awake. So here, just go into the track checkpoints and subscribe to the various events. All right, so there it is, very simple. We have our two events and we either show or hide. Okay, that's it. We don't need to touch the track checkpoints at all. Let's test. And for each checkpoint single, we can also get rid of the visual. So we can remove the mesh render. All it really needs is just the actual box collider. So let's see. Okay, so here we are. Let's go through the first one. Okay, now let's skip the second one and go straight to the third one. And as we hit, yep, there you go. We have our wrong checkpoint. So we need to go back into that one. And if we go through the second one, yep, that one hides and it's all correct. All right, let's just visualize the actual correct checkpoint. So we can add a simple show and hide on the checkpoint single. So just a simple show and hide function. And on the track checkpoint, when we go through the wrong one, let's access the correct one. So the checkpoint single, let's grab it from the list. So we go into the list on the next checkpoint single index and just grab that one and call show. And when we go through it, then we call false. All right, that should do it. And just for fun, let's add a fun animation. All right, so here we are. Let's go through the first one and everything so far so good. Let's skip the second one and go straight into the third one. And yep, we have the wrong checkpoint, and now we should be able to visualize, and yep, we can see where the correct checkpoint is. All right, great. Now, in this case, for this simple design that I have here, there's only a single player. So if we had multiple cars on the track, we would need to keep track of the current checkpoint for each of them. So let's handle that to make this checkpoint system a bit more versatile. So here we're tracking a single in for the next checkpoint index. In order to support multiple cars, all we need to do is really just store multiple ints. So instead of just one, let's store a list of ints. Next checkpoint, single index list, okay? And now for the size, let's also define a list of transforms, which will be for all of our cars. So a private list of transforms for the car transform list. And let's make this a serialized field so we can set it in the editor. So here, let's make multiple cars. So we've got this one, let's make this one. Let's just disable the player script so I'm not controlling both at once. And here on the track, we have the car transform list and just drag both of them on there. So now here on awake, let's initialize this list. So a new list, and then we go for each car transform. And for each of them, we go into the next checkpoint single and we add a new element onto our list. Then here, let's rename this function. It's no longer the player going through the checkpoint. So let's use the very helpful Visual Studio rename. So control RR and we can easily rename this. So let's call it car through checkpoint. We're passing the checkpoint single and then also transform for the car transform. And then in order to get the next checkpoint index, so an int for the next checkpoint index, let's go into the next checkpoint index list and we're going to access it and find the index of this car transform. So on the car transform list, do an index of this car transform. And with that, we get the next checkpoint single index. And here we do the same thing, just compare it with that one. And then we just increment the one on the exact same position. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now on the checkpoint single, we just need to pass in the actual car. So in this case, it's the other dot transform. Let's test. So here we are, and I'm currently driving only this car. And I go through this one. And yep, in the log, I'm still seeing the correct checkpoint. So then I go into this one and okay, I went through both checkpoints. Now let's swap out to the other car. So I'm now driving this other car and let's see if the correct checkpoint for this other car is indeed the first one. And as I go through, yep, there it is in there, we have our correct checkpoints. All right, so we now keep track of the correct checkpoint for each individual car, making the system very versatile and easily able to support multiple cars on the same track or in different positions. So here we have our final system. It's really simple and it works great. Now you can obviously use this for racing games, driving around the car, that's obvious. But over here, I have another demo. This one is in 2D. I have a normal 2D player character and I want to tell the player to go to the right side. 
So I place some checkpoints in here and use the exact same scripts, just modify the to support in 2D. And if I go into the left into the incorrect checkpoint that's placed in here, and there you go, now we see that I'm supposed to go through here. So go through here, then the next one and so on. So I just place these checkpoints. So pretty much exactly the same thing, except using a box collider 2D. And over here, instead of on trigger enter, just using on trigger enter 2D. And the track checkpoints script, this one didn't need to be touched at all. So it all works perfectly fine, either in 2D or 3D. And as you can see, it works great both for normal car games, as well as just anything where you want the player to follow a specific path or the player or really any other object. So this works great for really any scenario where you want the player or any object to go through a preset path. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.